I wrote the same web scraping project using Go's Collie, Python Scrapey, and async HTTPX to see which was the fastest. So the rules were simple. There's a thousand pages, all HTML, including pagination, pulling the same data from the same site. I tried to keep everything as constant as possible, running all on my local machine using the same internet connection, same CSS selectors for the data, and trying to stick to the recommended usage from the project's official documentation, and also using the same timing method. I ran each one 10 times and then took the average. Now I have to mention that I did this for my own interest, comparing three technologies and methods that I've used, and it's by no means an X is better than Y comparison. It's just to explore what happens under specific circumstances circumstances. Oh, uh, and it's very likely that my code just plain sucks. So here's the results. So here's the overall execution time, the average from each 10 runs that I took. Now we can see that Collie is clearly the quickest here with an average time of 5.66 seconds. The one that I wrote using HTTPX, async and selectolax, which is my preferred Python stack at the moment, averaged out at 7.5, 7.59, and then Scrapey came in a bit later at 19.48. If you're looking to scale up your web scraping projects and need a solution that can render JavaScript and handle proxies for you, then you'll want to check out the sponsor of today's video scraping bee it's a real-time web scraping api that solves a web scraper's biggest pain points rendering javascript pages and managing that proxy pool scraping bee will handle your headless browsers and rotating proxies for you giving a simple to use and intuitive api built for developers and ready to integrate into your own system project or solution they'll manage your chrome instances for you handling the rendering and the page loading meaning you can focus on just dealing with the data that you need and avoid having to manage your own resource heavy stack of browsers. You can also send custom JavaScript snippets too to evaluate on the page, giving you that extra flexibility and functionality. There's a large proxy pool that will all auto-rotate and are geolocated, which gives you a very quick and efficient data extraction and web scraping experience for you or your development team. There's a Python package on pip2 to make your life even easier if you're a Python developer like me. If this sounds like a solution that could help you out, then I highly recommend that you check out Scraping B at the link in the description below. So why are these so different? Well, the first reason is that uh, Collie and the async one are pure async, where Scrapey is using the Twisted Framework. There's also a lot more going on in these than uh, initially meets the eye. So Go is obviously going to be a bit quicker because it's compiled, which definitely helps. But seeing as that's part of the language, I allowed that. I wonder if perhaps Scrapey had a little more ramp up time to get everything going. It has all the settings and everything for the projects. But comparing them like this, I suppose it's interesting to see the, how close the async and the Collie one were uh, was in that respect. So the next metric that I decided to look at was the amount of lines of code that I actually wrote for each one of these projects. And this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting. So this is lines of code that I wrote rather than total project. And we'll come to that in just a minute. And this also kind of comes into what I like to call perceived complexity. Um, because if you, you can clearly see that with Scrapey, I only had to write 26 lines of code to get the same result as I did with my async code where I needed 118 lines of code to do essentially the same thing. Now, obviously Scrapey is a framework that has a lot of stuff going on behind that it does for you, and that's the perceived complexity part. So I didn't actually do any real configuration to the Scrapey project itself for this example. We didn't really need to change a lot. So although there was a lot going on behind the scenes, personally, myself, I only had to write 26 lines of code and it took almost no time. Whereas the async scraper, I had to write and understand how async IO works in Python. I had to create several functions to handle the pagination, to return the data to me, et cetera, et cetera. The Collie one is a very similar example. It's very similar to a Scrapey one, where you know, there's a lot of things being abstracted away from you. But at 50 lines of code, considering that Go is a lot more verbose in any way, um, I thought that was pretty good. And I actually think that the uh, the way that you write the scrapers in Collie is uh, pretty uh, understandable and it's very intuitive with the on HTML. You have a function that does this when it finds an element that matches this CSS selector rather than Scrapey's kind of like pass and uh, request approach. However, once you understand how Scrapey works, it is pretty straightforward too in that respect. Obviously, one more caveat, I've said it already, but just to be sure, this is a very, very simplistic example. 
you can have scrapey code, scrapey spiders that are much, much larger. And there's probably stuff in this async 118 lines of code that I could have trimmed down and done better. So the last one that I wanted to look at, which I guess didn't turn out to be particularly useful, but I guess we'll look at it anyway, is the project size. So the overall, what do you need to actually run this on your computer, on your machine? Um, and Scrapey is obviously the heaviest. There's a lot going on in this framework. It can do a lot of things and it needs all that code behind it to do that. So it came in like the whole project and obviously I'm including the Python virtual environments here because that's how you would do it. That's how you're told to do it. So that came in about 88 megabytes, which I thought was quite large actually. My async code, which had less dependencies was about half of that. And my Go binary was only 15 megabytes. Now the benefits of obviously being to able to compile your Go programs is that that's all I need to run this. That binary will execute depending on what you build it for. I obviously built mine for Linux. It runs on any Linux machine. I could just throw this up onto a VPS server and I could run it there and it would work absolutely fine. So if we were to look at all of these together, which one would I suggest that you uh, look at using or not look at using? Um, I've actually made a video on why I don't use Scrapey so much. I'll link that somewhere. And the async code that I wrote where I actually wrote everything for me, higher complexity. However, you can be very specific and tailored with what you want and how you deal with it. So that's writing a very sort of tailored project specific uh, piece of code that we could grow and change into whatever we needed. The Collie version is very, very quick and is very quick and easy to write, run and very easy to manage when you're talking about running it on a cron job on a different server or something like that. However, I tend to stick to this only for HTML parsing and when it comes to actually working with data, Python has the edge over thing over go when you want to throw in things like pandas and visualization so it depends on what you're trying to achieve in that respect so let's try and sum it up there's a lot that's not happening here in regards to real world web scraping and tests and benchmarks like these just aren't representative of all the use cases and therefore should only be used as a small part of a decision when making uh, when choosing tech and should just never solely be relied on it is, however, interesting to see what performs well in specific situations and the learning experience of trying to improve your code to make it more performant is definitely worth exploring. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about the async scraper that I wrote using HTTPX, you're going to want to watch this video next.